the Sony MZN10 is truly a flagship, feeling even more premium than the previous year's MZN1. A three-line display and jog dial means you didn't need a remote. The internal battery could be switched on or off. Then the large jog dial on the left allows you to scroll through options and push down to select. This device would not play any discs, and trying to run tests in the service menu failed due to focus issues. I figured it was time to open it up, clean it, and see if the service menu tests would work after that. The first screw helps remove the knob mounting plate. Now that it's loose, there are two screws underneath. We actually didn't have to remove it for this job though. Let's remove the remaining bottom case screws. Now we can remove the bottom case from the battery side first. Now for the top lid. There are four screws. Gently open it, there's a ribbon cable present. Let's peel up the tape and gently loosen the clips holding the ribbon cable in place. I'm now looking for anything obvious that could be interfering, lint, hair, or other debris. Let's do some cleaning with alcohol. Lens first, then rail and gear shaft. After cleaning, I want to run through the service menu, so we'll have to connect the front lid. Let's get that ribbon cable back in. The internal battery wasn't holding a charge, so I've gotten an adapter to power it on.
Let's test a disk. Remember to turn on the internal battery while charging so you can use it. As you can see, it's still just displaying error. It seems to recognize the disk talk, but it can't play it. That's actually not terrible since it seems the laser is reading something. Perhaps some tuning will help. Let's get into the service menu by activating the hold switch, holding down group, and using the right, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, pause, pause sequence using the joystick. Make sure you have a CDMD around, and once you're in the service menu, push left left to start the CD test. Let it run without moving it, and it should finish with CD OK. There. Now let's switch to a MO MD disk, the normal rewritable MD. Push stop to exit the CD test and push right right to get to the MO test. It will run for a while, so I'll speed up this section. There, MOOK means that the calibration succeeded. Push stop so we can get back home, then push right to get into manual mode. We are here to write the calibration value so we can save the settings from the test we just did. Use the arrows to navigate.
Let's get to 35, press pause, and save the offset values. Let's go back down to 24 to save everything and exit. You should see something like ASSYFF. If not, you may need to run more tests. Push pause to save and cut power. Let's test, but don't forget the hold switch like I just did. Looks good, no error so far. Playing with no errors, that's further than before. I need to check with headphones. It's working. K-pop coming through loud and clear. Let's check that CD MD. All good here too. I think it's time to reassemble. Let's start with a knob mounting plate. I guess I didn't really need to remove it. Once that's done, we'll get the rear plate. Look out for three things. The hold switch, battery switch, and eject slider. Make sure they're all lined up. As usual, start from the jack side first and it should slide on nicely.
check the switches before you screw it back on. Looks good, let's screw it back together. The final bottom case screw holds the knob's mounting plate. Let's slide that into place first. Now for the top lid, just four screws. While it was open, I did lube the sled rail and any visible gear, gear shaft areas I could reach. Time for some final testing. Looks good. Talk was read quickly with no errors. Let's test with headphones. The large jog dial and three-line display make navigation easy. Playback and navigation are working great. Make sure to get in there and turn off AVLS and check out the different sound configurations. I'm glad that this is working. It was just a pretty paperweight.
Thanks for watching.